What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's just the morning after that Sheffield United Chelsea match where I'm not even gonna lie, I barely even know why I want to talk about this game. The good thing is that I didn't do that watch along because I would have just been sitting there vexed through the entire second half and good thing that I'm in Manchester and I've been able to drink my sorrows away. My head's still banging a little bit but it's was more it was more enjoyable than watching the game so i'm not going to complain too much first we want to say before i start this video is if you guys enjoyed this sort of content from me let me know i'll start making this some more regular piece of content for you guys i'm trying to find out more types of videos to do on this channel i'm trying to be as flexible as creative as possible so if you guys enjoyed this let me know down in the comment section below this is five talking points from Sheffield United 3 Chelsea 0 and let's be real there's a lot to talk about so let's just get straight into it first talking point is the centre-backs and I think that's possibly been the one of the biggest talking points this entire season I think we need to be honest with ourselves when it comes to the centre-backs and let's be real our best centre-back is nobody most of all of our centre-backs have been hyped or have been in good form at some periods of the season they've looked like our best centre-back but Let's be real, there isn't a leader. And I remember we were saying till December, we were trying to wait for Antonio Rudiger to come back because he gives some experience to the back line. And that hasn't happened, there's an alarm. That is really jarring me right now. Yeah, that's gone at least. Um, yeah, like I was saying, we wanted Rudiger to come back for experience, but he's come back and he's just looked rash and he's just looked completely off the pace. Kurt Zuma looked very shaky at the start of the season, started to come into the team a little bit better, had a great return to the team back in April against Crystal, no, against Watford and Crystal Palace. But then he looked off the pace again today. Christensen, he's had his good games as well, but he's looked off the pace ever since the Manchester City game and he's looked poor too. For Kyle Tomori even, around September, October, this guy was looking like potentially our most promising youth player this season. But he's looked like he's had issues as well. And the whole problem has just been it's defensive individual mistakes and then defensive organisational mistakes. Then it's goalkeeping mistakes as well. And this is low-key going to lead to my second point as well. But my first point is that our best centre-back really is nobody. The fact that this season... I will be real, we've done very well to be in top four for as long as we have been because most of the teams around us have collapsed. There was a, but the same way, it's also been a bit of a bottle drop from us. I, I can't even remember how many points we, we were clear of Manchester United at one point and we've let them come back. Same way with Leicester City, they were like 10, 15 points ahead of us or something like that and they've let us come back and that's just showing how poor the, com the competition's been in the Premier League. But we also need to look only at ourselves and the consistency from Chelsea has been poor this season and the problem at centre-back is a huge reason for it. Going on to my second point, Kepa isn't solely to blame for how many goals we've conceded and I, I will say as well Kepa was not innocent today because the second goal he could have done a lot better for and he was very close to the ball and he could have jumped for that in hindsight. But Kepa isn't only isn't solely to blame. He has been scapegoated so badly this season when it's really the centre-backs that have been a huge issue as well. And it's been the entire defence as well. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't think any defender can look back at this season and say that they've had a good season. Maybe I would say Reese James, but even past lockdown, he's looked He's looked really behind it on fitness. He doesn't look like the same Reese James he saw going into lockdown. He was really progressing and developing as a player. He was playing at Chelsea for the first time this season. But Kepa isn't solely to blame. Look at the first goal, for example. Literally mirrored the Aston Villa goal we conceded like three weeks ago. Where Kepa makes a brilliant save. The ball even came in from a deflection as well. But no one was there to try and get the rebound. The Villa game, it was Rudiger and Christensen falling asleep. The game yesterday, it was Christensen and Zuma falling asleep. And its I'm, I don't want to call it predictable because organisational mistakes aren't ever that easy to predict. But it's easy to predict that this team is going to make mistakes in defence. And with Sheffield United, it was so easy to figure out their game plan as well. They're one of the tallest teams in the league. And all we did was just let them whip crosses in. We know how good they are at corners as well. I was shitting myself every single time this team had a corner. And we just played right into their hands. This is going to lead into my third point. Frank Lampard, he's still learning his role. And I think yesterday, 
was a little bit of a slap back to reality for Chelsea fans. We need to understand that Lampard is still developing and is still going to make mistakes. To, yesterday was a huge example for it. You got the lineup all wrong, which I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to criticise him too much for it because if you saw my preview, I said let's play four at the back and let's play the same back four as well. So I'm not going to just be a hypocrite and turn on him for that. But in hindsight, it was the wrong decision. We should have played 3-4-3. Three, three. He tried changing it to 3-4-3 three, three at half-time. It was just 45 minutes too late. I mean, in a sense of game management, it doesn't make sense when you're 2-0 down to bring on another defender and a wing back as well. I get what Lampard was trying to do. In hindsight, we should have started with that. I don't want to criticise him too much because he is still a young manager and he still produced tactical masterclasses this season. But yesterday was just a little bit more of a kick and it was more like, okay, he's still young, he's still learning, he's still going to make mistakes. Nothing too deep, but it just is what it is with Lampard. Uh, point number four, and that is there is still an underlying mentality problem in this club and that's because... Lampard is not the first person to talk about it. Maurizio Sarri literally last season after the Bournemouth and Arsenal games was talking about a mentality problem in this club. Antonio Conte said the same thing after he lost 4-1 to Watford and Mourinho said it as well in his last spell. Sometimes these players are just hard to motivate. And this season is looked like that in terms of whenever we play the same team, the se whenever we play a team with a similar sort of style of play to the bottom half of the league, which I'm not even counting Sheffield United in this one because their defensive setup is just great and there's a reason why they're still within the Europa League places. They're not one of those bottom half teams, but they're still a team with a good defensive shape. And whenever we face a team that's defensive minded first, we struggle to break them down. And I feel like with this game, we more or less just gave up. I mean, I was seeing players like William, who was barely even trying to trying to run around in the second half because he just looked like the game has lost. And I'm seeing that this is one of your veteran players, and this is why play, this is why managers are still talking about a mentality problem in this club. It is going to get weeded out. It's not something that I'm shouting and screaming about because we are towards the back end of the season, and with the way we've been moving in the transfer window, we need to try and get. Um, we, are try we are trying to clear some deadwood as well as trying to bring in the players that we want. So we are going in a positive space, in a positive shape long term. It's just right now, we look, we look like we're in a position to bottle a really comfortable position that we've been in for a long time this season. Because we've been in top four since October, November comfortably. And let's be real, regardless of our expectations for the season at the start, if we drop out of top four right at the end, it's going to be a kick in the teeth regardless. Point five, which is us potentially, because we could be fifth now if results don't go our way. And we've been worried about it for a while. Manchester United were really starting to creep on us before lockdown, before lockdown even happened. They've continued applying the pressure since. And now we have to rely on Bournemouth and Southampton to potentially save us from dropping out of the top four for the first time in months. I mean, I know we dropped out for about three hours, but then we won our game, so that don't really count. This could potentially be our first time that we drop out of the top four in months. And we're meant to rely on Bournemouth, but Bournemouth don't turn up unless it's Chelsea. Southampton could do something. They've got tricky players and then they got Danny Ings who's this close to 20 goals a season so there could be some something in the in potential there but I highly doubt Bournemouth are going to pull anything out of Leicester but guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below do you guys still think we're going to make the top four do you guys think we bowled it do you guys still think there's plenty to play for Loki I think they, I think it's kind of slipped out of our control now, but it all depends on the final day. Leicester City are facing Manchester United, we're facing Wolves. That is going to be so big in the race for the top four. I mean, it obviously is because it's the last day, but the fact that it's four potential top four rivals all facing off at the same time, it's going to be a big day on the final day. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Up the trails.